So here's a set we've covered lots of times before. Comes in two versions, by Antenna Route 66, there's a Mark 1, there's a Mark 2. Um, Mark 1's exceptionally complex to set up, and hopefully this will be the Mark 2. Uh, no receive light. Does that mean no RX light, or does it mean no receive, but it lights? I'm not quite sure, Mark, let's put that on. Right, we'll get it powered up. So they have an interesting transmitted audio. It's a bit like a realistic 1007 handheld, that it kind of comes on loud and then settles down. So better open it up and see what flavour we've got. These were well known to be another bleed over box, but you know where I am it's not a problem. That's lost one screw on the floor. That won't be seen ever again. late version, thank goodness. So, see so you've got the synthesizer chip here, it's an LC7136 from Sanyo. And the early production has the PLL-02A, which is a typical American one, and a whole pile of conversion um, stuff to uh, to make that happen. So this is the better one to have. Try not to touch this because you need to do it on a spectrum analyzer. It's not part of the alignment. It's the filter. So we'll we may end up. I think they're norm, they're normally just proud of the can. Look, I have a photograph of setup, which will save me wading through the manual because even this one's more complex than a lot of sets. You have a high power and a low power adjustment, which is unusual. I can I remember right the standard Cybernet type of wiring. There is another set that uses this chassis, which is the Eurocom DX40. Eurocom was part of Zycom two-way radio at Ripley in Derbyshire. They did the Eurocom and uh, DX40 and the Eurocom, something, we've got both anyway, but uh, one of the Eurocom offerings is this chassis, and the other is a unique set which worked fair enough, but is unusual. Um, I saw one advertised as rare, it amazes me, you know, people put the word rare in a YouTube advert, I don't think there's anybody who would ever use as a search criteria the word rare. You're searching for a, let's say you're searching for a Binotone 5 star CB radio. So you type in Binotone 5 star. You don't type the word, well, put the word rare in, do you? So it's just a word wasted because it's not part of anybody's search criteria. It, that's probably something you'd put on a market store or look with two eyeballs with that signs on, on, you know, I just don't get it. Anyway. So, let's see if we can power it up. And Mark says there's no receive light, and that appears to be it. The light bulb, so we, we'll get a new one in uh, from stock. So it must have got some hours on it to have uh, to have worn the light bulb out. All right, let's get the clipboard. We'll start by putting picture-in-picture picture on. 
I've seen it appear on the monitor, doesn't mean it appears on the video. And the radio is doing 2.7 watts. Channel 1 is doing 2.75 watts. Channel 40. It's doing 2.7 watts. So, about where you are with new sets, isn't it? Hopefully, we'll be able to bring it up somewhere nearer 4. Unlike a lot of new sets, current consumption is 1.089. And low power, and we have. 200 milliwatts. No excuse for that because it's adjustable. Deviation for what it's worth. Wallow. 0.5. Yeah, we are on channel 20. Well, that's not right. Frequency. I'm going to just put the test gear on 10 minutes ago, so it'll be a bit low. 2779081 We'll just set the signal generator for that same frequency One, so it's, we're matching it I think we'd better plug a speaker in so we're going to plug in our test equipment speaker to the extension speaker socket and we're going to plug in the speaker on the wall to the public address speaker socket. Switch to public address. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two. I've got one of these which was newer return in a box. I've still got the box up there. And when I opened it up, this heat sink with the audio IC on it was missing. It took me years to find a scrap one of these to get a heat sink out of. Like 10 or 12 years. Right. Oh, I didn't, I didn't look at the power meter, did I? I'll transmit. Key it up, see what that meter reads. It says four while well, it's lying. And I'm receive it's showing S9, it's spot on with the 100 microvolts we've got on the signal generator. But it won't be when we've adjusted it, will it? No, Mr. Tango. Right, sign that meter on and Put that on the inset picture. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's working well. 0 0.47. 0 0.39. So the service manual covers the early version, but it doesn't really cover, you get a circuit diagram, but everything else is only relevant to the early version, which is why I've got these extensive notes. Let's turn the squelch to full. I think I remember something being wishy-washy about the squelch. Yeah, it's 12 microvolts. And the sensitivity on the squelch. Not point three microvolts. Switches work, potentiometers work, sockets work. Oh, this is doing all right.
I'm going to set the frequency at this point. I'll probably have to go back right at the end. So we'll start by putting the frequency counter back on and locating the reference crystal, which is where I've changed my glasses. But when I start again, I've had Saturday's wedding cancelled. They're ill. Too poorly to get married. I'm glad I didn't spend the wedding fee. Seven nine one two five. I'll uh, leave it at 21 because it's still rising. Right, we'll reset the signal generator. 2779. 122, 120, that's it. Right, transmit. So we want transmit on full power initially. So it's that preset. Let's make sure we've got the inset picture to the test set so we're now doing 5 watts so the transmit multipliers 1, 2, 3 got to be quick because we're well over the power it's supposed to be doing so the first one peaked peak at the centre of where we want to pitch about 4.9 now. So it heats up, it drops down. All very good. And then we'll just change tools. go drop the power four watts channel one four watts and a tiny tiddler and four watts Good. Power consumption when we get back to channel 20 will now shot up to 1.285. Still very efficient and low power, let's set it. So in low power, we were doing 200 milliwatts before, we're now doing 200 milliwatts. So it's the other preset is that one 400 milliwatts I'm going back to full power because they can be interactive these two no it's spot on so it's fine today no need to do the VCO uh, I'd have to work a technique out because the service manual only refers to the early version so TX meter is that preset there and that's now going to be banging across I expect. So bring rain that into say four. Deviation we'll do on the other test set. And it's the preset right at the back there I'll do um, I'll do receive first it's already very good I 
so we'll start with the detector which is there so S9 on the signal generator over to the oscilloscope put a bit more volume so we get a more meaningful trace just make sure that that's correct hang on a minute that isn't right No, it's that one. Very uh, slight adjustment there, and it's uh, all over. Right, over to the sign meter. About 5 dB on there. Those are VCO, which we're not touching. Oops, put the scrolls up. Very slight gain there. That was spot on. Change tools. A bit more signal. The one I inadvertently touched. Spot on. That's it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's get a new reading. 12 dB is now 0.4. Ten DB is now 0.35, and twenty DB is 0.95 still. All right, squelch. You've got two. You've got high end and low end. So squelch normal, and squelch low end so I want more squelch see whether we can get 100 microvolts probably near where we want it. Let's try it at the low end.
about one microvolt. It's about now about 140 microvolts. That should work uh, how we want it. It's a faff between the high end and the low end on these sets. Right, so now we'll put 100 microvolts on the signal generator and we want to align the S meter for that. It, it is spot on, but just to go through the motions for you, receive meter is that one there. Now we're back to S9. So, other than deviation, uh, we're there. So I'll see whether we can set that up with the test set. I remember a wholesaler clearing these for five pounds plus VAT in 1983. I wouldn't say they had many of them though. They hadn't got any when I went. Ooh, that's set. Put that plug in. I said these always sound weird on transmit. Wow, it's not far out, it's 2.2. Wow. It's now 2.2 to 2.5, and out of interest, we'll see what it says on the Marconi test set. What? Oops, I'm not in the right mode. What? Freezing 1.6, freezing low today, which is why we use the other one. So it was actually 2.2 kilohertz, it's now 2.2 to 2.5 kilohertz. Let's check where we are with frequency now. And it's still a little tiny bit low. When I cut, I'll come back in 40 minutes and we'll just make sure it's on frequency. And that's it. We're not going to touch any of that, there's no reason to do so. If you suspect it has, it's going to have to go on a spectrum analyzer. But you can fit, as I have demonstrated these before, uh, on all radios that you can do what you can, what you're supposed to do on a spectrum analyzer. You can use a grid dip meter or a FET dip meter. Um, I've shown that before with the Heath kit one, which we had kindly donated by Eddie. So there we go. We'll be back in 40 minutes. Right. So let's just see where we are with the frequency now. Now things have warmed up, we'll just pop that back down a bit. How about that then? Good, that's it, we're done. Check we're not stupidly over the uh, power. It's about 4.05 cold. Oh, it's a very clean example. These came with a coffin mark which said Route 66 on them. We probably even got a shell kicking around, but um, it's a standard coffin mic. We have shown the other version as well as this. The one that's a swine to uh, service. And that's in the back catalogue. I think we've got Mr Chippy today, so we should be getting a on-the-air test. So we'll probably do this on-the-air test physically first. And hopefully do yesterday's 
low TX40 as well today. But you'll know what, when I, when you hear the audio on this, you'll know what I mean. some more screws on order for once I drop on the floor right well there we go get to drop the test gear plug it into the aerial and see oh but let's see if the internal speaker works as well it does plug it into the roof aerial you know what I've still not done the green light have I We'll come back. Right, it's back to where we should have been with the green receive light. It's just a light bulb. It's an ordinary clear light bulb. Um, these um, windows have the other coloured uh, bit. We do have green ones in stock, but it doesn't need to be. Right, so. One on a Roger. So these will all be the 35 mile away Burnley Brigade from Nottingham, I expect. Good. Well, there we have it. Bannerton Route 66. It's the later version. And can you tell which is the right version? 01 stroke 8. Oh, it's 8538A. 8538A. I don't think it has a suffix A when it's the early version. But this is definitely the one to have, I promise you. There's such a swine to set up. So thanks for watching. Banister Route 66. It's still 1981 even when it's a late version.